which is Laura. Okay, Sam Dawson, thanks so much for keeping us updated. And yesterday, we were also keeping across the, the fire situation. We will do uh, for the rest of the week, of course. But uh, Tony Abbott, the Prime Minister, was out uh, with his Davidson Brigade in his area of Warringah. And he was able to join the Davidson Brigade uh, conducting backburning in the Bilpin area. We uh, brought you uh, photos yesterday. We'll try and bring you those again this morning. But look, I want to uh, go to our panel now the Assistant Minister for Social Services, Mitch Fifield, and the new Shadow Assistant Treasurer, Andrew Lee. Congratulations to you. But first, uh, Mitch Fifield, looking at this uh, situation, uh, can you t uh, tell us what kind of payments are avail available for bushfire victims, what kind of assistance they can expect from the government here? Sure. Well, the uh, the Australian Government disaster relief uh, payments uh, are in operation, uh, and that's a thousand dollars to uh, eligible adults and uh, four hundred dollars for eligible kids. Uh, that's being made available to people whose homes have been destroyed, uh, whose homes have been damaged, uh, or who have sustained an injury. Uh, in parallel with that, um, are joint Commonwealth state uh, disaster arrangements, which make provision for uh, food, clothing, uh, accommodation. Mm -hmm. Uh, people who who have queries who, who want to know uh, what's available should uh, get in contact with the uh, Commonwealth Department of Human Services uh, who are acting uh, as the, the lead Commonwealth agency on the ground in those areas. And I understand the eligibility payments have been changed when it comes to federal assistance from those who've had their home destroyed or severely damaged uh, to those who've been cut off or uh, their electricity has been cut off or they've been cut off from their homes. They're no longer available eligible for these payments, is that correct? Well, there's, there's a range of, uh, of categories uh, which can be uh, activated for uh, any emergency. Uh, the decision that the government has taken is to uh, initially provide uh, assistance to those who've been uh, directly and immediately affected uh, by way of home being uh, damaged or destroyed. Uh, as the situation develops, uh, the, the government will continue to assess the situation. Mm, Andrew Lee, this is a change from Labor policy. Um, these payments are still going to the most affected? Uh, they are going to the most affected, Laura, but I would urge the government to, on this case, uh, be a little more generous to open up that payment category to people who've been unable to access their home in the previous 24 hours. Uh, the trauma that comes from being cut off from your home. Uh, I know for many of these Blue Mountains re residents, uh, whether they're living in evacuation centres at the moment and the challenges you face with kids, uh, I think that's, that's an appropriate use of, uh, of taxpayer funds. Uh, so I hope that the government uh, does uh, change, change that decision there because I'm a little concerned by the reports I read in the paper today about uh, challenges for families accessing payments. Okay, we'll move on to some um, political policy areas and one thing that has been bubbling away is the carbon tax issue. This will be considered by a shadow cabinet today, uh, no doubt. But you've also accused Greg Hunt of playing politics with climate change. What do you mean by that? Uh, well, at the moment what we've seen from the Coalition is uh, a bill to repeal the carbon price, uh, but not a bill to put anything in its place. Uh, so what they want to do is they want to scrap the measure that's already uh, working to reduce emissions uh, at lower cost than we anticipated and replace it with, well, we don't really know. Uh, I mean, as uh, Malcolm Turnbull pointed out a couple of years ago, uh, the chief virtue of direct action is its ability to be easily dismantled uh, if one decides that climate change isn't real. But after the hottest winter on record, which followed the hottest summer on record, I think it's very clear that climate change is happening, humans are causing it, we need to deal with it in the cheapest, uh, cheapest possible way. Do you point That's to this bushfire situation as an example of climate change in action? No, I don't think any particular event can be, uh, can be traced to climate change, mm. uh, but we do know that uh, climate change is going to cause more extreme, extreme weather events uh, and, uh, and more uh, of those extreme, extremely hot days. Uh, we're already, we've seen that uh, in the weather records in Australia just over the past year. Mitch Fifield. The direct action plan, this is certainly an area that Labor is trying to shift the debate from carbon tax to focus on the direct action plan. Do you see weaknesses here for the government? Look, I, I don't. Uh, you know, Greg Hunt uh, outlined uh, before the election, in fact, uh, two elections back, uh, the, the broad outline of our direct action plan and, uh, and further detail of that uh, uh, will be presented uh, by the minister. Uh, but 
You're right. Uh, Labor are trying to deflect uh, to another subject because they don't want to talk about the fact that they introduced a carbon tax. They don't want to talk about the fact uh, that the electorate comprehensively repudiated the fact that they introduced a carbon tax, despite the fact that former Prime Minister Gillard said uh, that she never would and that Labor never would. Um, what's entirely unclear at the moment is what Labor are going to do uh, when the carbon tax repeal legislation hits the parliament. Mm. Um, Andrew Lee, now, there seems to be a split within the party at the moment. Um, WA Senator Mark Bishop just the latest saying that Labor should just let this legislation go, go through. Um, Nick Champion was the first after the election to say that Labor should abstain in the Senate and shift the fight to direct action. What do you think the party should do? Uh, well, Laura, certainly Mr Abbott has been a weather vane on climate change, but I don't think we ought to, uh, just because the Prime Minister has held every conceivable do position. Do you accept that issue. not everyone's on board? Uh, I, I think that this is a, challenge, a challenging issue, as things of, often are after an election. Uh, but our party policy is very clear. Pricing carbon is the most straightforward way, uh, the cheapest way. Uh, and if you go to direct action, frankly, what that's doing uh, is to cut taxes on polluters. Should Labor go through the next election then promising to reinstate an ETS? We've just, we've just had an election, Laura. I don't think we're about to sit here uh, laying out our policies for the next election. But what I can tell you is that our policy uh, is very clearly uh, that pricing carbon is the, uh, the cheapest way of dealing with climate change. Households can't afford direct action. It's just too expensive. Well, Labor's policy is anything but clear. Um, uh, Andrew's saying it, it's clear, but are they going to support the carbon tax repeal legislation? Simple question, uh, yes or no. Uh, Mark Bishop uh, is someone I've got a great deal of respect for, and he has made it clear that Labor should heed the message from the election, and that is to support the repeal of the carbon tax. Labor can't say their position is clear until they give us an answer on that. Have you ever said you had respect for him before this very moment now, now Mitch? No. Is it just the fact that well, he... Well, actually, I, I, as, as fond as I am of you, um, I have frequently expressed my admiration in, in the Senate for Mark Bishop. Right. He's, he's a quality a, senator. Just a last question on this, Andrew Lee. It hasn't been that clear over the last week, you'd have to say. There has been debate publicly and both privately, I understand. So when Shadow Cabinet meets, you do expect a fight over this. There are some within Labor who want to just let the legislation go through and there's some that want to fight it all the way to the election. We'll have reasonable discussions on this as on, on other things, Laura, and I've got strong respect for people like Nick and Mark who take an alternative view. Uh, but ultimately you asked me my view, uh, and that is that pricing carbon is the right reform. It's the reform that Labor has been committed to for the 2007, 2010 and 2013 elections. Uh, I think we ought to stick with it because it's the cheapest, most effective strategy. Okay, Andrew Lee, Mitch Fifield, don't go away. Uh, after the break, we're going to look at this commission of audit and also the issue of asylum seekers. Stay with us. This isn't just a classroom because it's much more than papers, pens, desks, and diagrams. This classroom is really in a classroom. This is science shared. The best teaching the brightest, using brilliant machines to empower local industry to compete on a global scale because our most valued resource isn't our technology or even the resource itself, it's our people. At Solar Heart, we're giving you energy free from the sun and cash free from the factory. Switch to Solar Heart and get up to $1,000 factory cash back, plus over $2,000 in government incentives still apply. Call 1300 2 Solar now. Count the number of batteries you rely on every day. Now multiply it by 7.6 million households. As the demand for battery power increases, plan for a positive future today with your own Battery World franchise. It's more connected with Bluetooth hands-free and audio streaming across the range. And more safe with seven airbags and ESC. What took you so long? Suzuki Swift from 14990 Drive Away. Why? Why? DDR! Man, I hate it when you just appear like that. A trillion pardons, Steve. What's up? This car insurance renewal, that's what's up. Well, I switched to Budget Direct, got a 10% online discount, and saved hundreds of your Earth dollars. Really? Customers told us they saved on average $244 when they switched to Budget Direct's award winning car insurance. Get smart, get direct, Budget Direct. Deal! Uh -huh. Smarter deal. When something happens out of the blue, whether it's at home or at work, you need a good lawyer and one you can trust. And that's when you call 1-800-555-777. Slater and Gordon. 
not a problem. The holiday season is fast approaching when we get together with the most important people in our lives. But getting things together in your own life is just as important. My 12-week body transformation brings together nutrition, fitness and mindset to create a long-term lifestyle change. You'll eat healthier, you'll feel great and you'll discover a whole new way of thinking. So, so you'll, you'll feel complete, complete and completely transformed. Now's the time to put it all together. Join today at 12wbt.com. I'm Heston Blumenthal, and I'm here with a range of my very own Christmas desserts, exclusively for Coles. Starting with this, my hidden orange Christmas pudding. This is a delicious, rich, fruity pudding with a whole beautifully perfumed candied orange hidden inside it. It is delicious. Available now only at Coles. But hurry, because I promise you, they won't last. Welcome back. Andrew Lee and Mitch Fifield join me on the panel this morning. Now, Mitch Fifield, just to you, uh, the Commission of Audit, the terms of reference are due to be signed off by Cabinet uh, tomorrow, as I understand it. Uh, and then there's also reports that this will look now more at structural saves than short-term budget saves. Is this the right way to go? And is this a change for what was promised at the election? Well, the, the Commission of Audit and its terms of reference will uh, will be released in the, in the, the near term. Mm. Uh, we, we've always said that the purpose of the Commission of Audit was to look at uh, how to make government as efficient as possible, uh, how to ensure that uh, the taxpayer dollars uh, got the, the maximum value, uh, and, and that remains the case. Uh, the, the, the scope and the terms of reference, uh, we'll, we'll see when they're released. And Andrew Lee, what will also be signed off on in Cabinet is the repeal legislation for the mining tax. This is one of Tony Abbott's first uh, promise in, in the first 100 days of government. Now, we've been kind of sidelined by looking at the carbon tax and mm. focusing on that, but what will Labor do here when it comes to, to that legislation? It's a great irony, isn't it, Laura? You've got the Coalition running a Commission of Audit where they're trying to find savings by cutting services to the poorest Australians. Uh, and then you've got them sitting there signing off on, uh, on a mining tax repeal, which is going to give a huge tax break to some rich mining billionaires. Uh, put those two together, if you didn't get rid of a profits-based mining tax, uh, you would be able to pay decent wages to childcare workers. You wouldn't have to rip away superannuation. But the mining tax under Labor didn't raise as much as it was forecast, so... Well, the, the Commonwealth Treasury has in its forward estimates, I think it's around $5 billion of mining tax revenue. That's not trivial when you're talking about the sorts of cuts that the Coalition is looking at make, making uh, to services that affect the most disadvantaged. Mitch Fifield? Well, I mean, we're, we're going to come back to the fact that the MRRT was, was a confidence sapping and therefore a job destroying uh, tax. Can't have it um, both but, ways. But, but, no, 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 no. So no, either it doesn't no, raise no, money or it saps confidence. No, no, Come no, on. No, no, you, no, you can uh, because uh, it, it did uh, cause pause uh, for foreign investors in, in relation to, to Australia. I mean, uh, you know, you do have uh, options when, uh, when you're, uh, you're a foreign investor as to which countries that you, you put your money into. Uh, so it, it, it did hit confidence. It did hit uh, the certainty in terms of the policy uh, environment in Australia. And, and that's damaging. Uh, but perversely, uh, it also raised, and I think the technical economic turn is uh, stuff or money. Um, and uh, yet, uh, the previous government uh, managed the unique feat of, of spending money that hadn't actually come in. Uh, so um, it's, it's not a good tax. Uh, we will get rid of it and are, Labor should you, Are you that. confident the government will be able to achieve a surplus earlier than what Labor had promised? Because there's reports this morning uh, that in fact, well Deloitte Access Economics has put out a report saying re reaching a sustainable surplus will be a Herculean task with uh, growth below trend. Is this something that the government should be sticking to? Is this just playing politics with it or is it something that, that you can absolutely commit to? Look, we're, we're not playing politics. We'll, we'll do uh, what we always have to do um, after we uh, mm -hmm. form government, uh, and that is uh, repay Labor's So it's a hell of a high, high water promise. 
Well, we've got to get the budget uh, back under control. Uh, we've got to get the budget back uh, on a sustainable footing. Uh, government has to live within its means, uh, and, and that's what we're going to do. Andrew Lee, this report would suggest that, uh, well, below trend growth until 2015, there's certainly a job ahead for the government. It's pretty concerning, isn't it, Laura? And let's remember why we have a, a profits-based mining tax. We had a tax review done, uh, headed by Ken Henry. Uh, its major recommendation was that the best way of taxing minerals is to make sure that when the world price goes up, Australians actually get a share of that increase in price. If you scrap the mining tax and go back to the oil, old royalties regime, you're basically saying if the iron ore price goes up tenfold, Australians enjoy none of that benefit. I don't think that's fair, and it's certainly not fair when the government is looking at cutting back superannuation to low-income low income Australians. I just want to turn to the asylum seeker issue now, Mitch Fifield. There was concerns raised yesterday by Tony Burke that the way in which we are getting information on the number of boat arrivals and what happens on Manus Island, well, it is creating a culture of secrecy and a culture of cover-up that could lead to incidents down the track in 10 years or so where you see um, more issues like we did see with with Cornelia Rao, Vivian Alvarez. Do you see any of those concerns and how can they be, be alleviated? Yeah, look, there's, there's no, uh, no uh, culture of secrecy or, or hiding of information. Um, perhaps not, there's, there's, perhaps there's, though it's not timely in the way journalists and the Australian public are getting information. There was an incident on Manus Island, for example. We got an update uh, yesterday late, uh, but it did take a number of days to, to sort clarification as to what actually happened. Well, uh, Scott Morrison uh, and the, the commander of Operation Sovereign Borders uh, are doing a very comprehensive uh, weekly briefings uh, and where there are um, other incidents uh, on occasion uh, where additional information is uh, is warranted and needed, uh, then that's provided and that was the case with the, the Manus uh, incident of a few days ago. So uh, the, the objective here is to, is to make sure uh, that uh, every tool that the government has at its disposal uh, to, uh, to beat the people smug and to destroy their trade uh, is, is deployed uh, and um, uh, the government will uh, be up front uh, about what's happening uh, but uh, look we're, we're and not... And are these policies starting to work? Is that what we're seeing in the reduced number of boat arrivals? Oh, well, I'll, I'll leave it to, uh, to, to Scott Morrison to, to provide uh, a commentary uh, as to the efficacy of the, of the particular measures uh, but uh, you know, the, the early signs are promising. Andrew Lee, uh, the boats starting to stop and is this due to the new government's policies or the previous Labor government? Well, we're already seeing a decline in, in boat arrival numbers before the election, Laura. Uh, but really, under the coalition, only two things have changed. Uh, you've seen uh, a removal of the regular updates when boat arrivals, uh, a new uh, veil of secrecy has descended over the department. Uh, and then you've seen uh, uh, Mr Morrison's insistence that all uh, boat arrivals be referred to as illegals, uh, mm. as though the real problem with Australia is that our public culture wasn't hostile enough to, uh, to refugees already. Uh, but frankly, those measures aren't going to have an impact on, on boat arrivals. Uh, the, uh, the towing back of the tow back policy after Mr Abbott visited uh, Indonesia, uh, I think has made clear uh, that really what, you, what you've got are the, the settings put in place uh, under our government with the refugee resettlement agreement. Tony Burke claimed yesterday that it was the PNG resettlement plan in part or mostly that has seen the decline in the number of boats. Do you agree with him? Well, I, I do. And it's a, it's a very firm message uh, that we're sending to people, smugglers, but it's a very clear one. Don't get on a boat. Don't risk the lives of your, yourself and your children because if you do you won't be resettled in Australia and its impact was I think uh, to uh, to avert drownings at sea uh, and we thought to allow us to take more refugees. So the I feel, I'll quickly back. get your response yeah. to that. Oh, look I, I just think it needs to be remembered that it was Labor and Government who dismantled offshore processing in the first place uh, said it was immoral to do um, and uh, then uh, in the face of reality you had no option but to start to implement some not all uh, some elements uh, they of fixed our policy. It then? Look they have that, that Labor, Labor didn't fix it because they didn't put in place uh, all the previous elements of of our policy, uh, which we're setting about doing. Okay, Mitch Fifield, Andrew Lee, we will have to leave it there. Thanks, Laura. Thanks, Thanks for joining me this morning.